Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and take a video of my printer uh, now that I've gotten a lot, got a lot of the upgrades done on it. Kind of show you what I've done here. Um, the framework is made out of six millimeter uh, five ply plywood, which is a, a really good grade plywood, with the exception of the top, which the top is a six millimeter smoked acrylic, and then the two side windows and the front door are made out of three millimeter clear acrylic. Uh, on the back, I have my spool holder uh, using a printed planetary gear bearing to hold it. And it's the same style of spool holder that is on uh, the um, Ultimaker. Uh, so it's got that same style uh, clip to go on the, on the uh, back here. And I'm using a Wade's geared extruder that I have set up as a Bowden style. So I just went ahead and put a quick coupler in there. The top is set up to have uh, two extruders on it. So if I want to do dual extruding, I can. As far as connections in the back, I have my power supply uh, connection that I just uh, stole the plug and the switch out of a uh, PC power supply, which bolted in very nicely. And then on this side over here, I have a panel mount USB connector. So that makes everything connect nicely without having to remove any panels. And the side windows only have two screws that you remove. And then there's just two pegs that go into two holes in the back here. So these side panels can come out. And then the front door also has lift off hinges so that you can remove the door and the side windows. So if you're doing something like PLA, then uh, it'll leave an open design for cooling, which makes it really nice. And then also having everything back in closed like that makes it uh, even nicer when you're doing ABS. Um, as you can see, I have a print that's on there right now that actually just got finished printing and I have no warping issues at all with it printed very nicely. That's a print for one of my friends. Um, the electronics are all concealed behind these panels. So I have a door here that has air inlet on the bottom and the exhaust on the top. So the fans pull the air up from the bottom, cool air. Cool air comes in from the bottom and goes up, goes up the top. So this is my power supply. I'm using a 33 amp, which is, I know, overkill, but it works nice, doesn't overheat. He's going the same way as the windows. There's just a peg that's on the panel, slips into the slot. And then there is a notch cut in the back, which then the uh, door just goes ahead and fits in that notch and then screws in with a three, three millimeter screw. On the other side, I have the same setup. This is for the electronics. I have a standard Arduino Mega with a Ramps 1.4 board on top. And then I also have a Raspberry Pi, which isn't hooked up yet. Um, my fans for cooling, which I don't have those hooked up because I actually want to get some new fans that are a little bit quieter. And this is set up so that you can either plug in an external computer, uh, which is what I have it plugged in right now, or you can use a Raspberry Pi. And to do that, I have a USB switch that I've mounted on the back of this panel that allows two computers to be able to control one peripheral. So that's how this is set up. And you can see this on the front. This panel clips in the same way with the two pegs and the holes. And then there's this button right here. There's two LED lights. The blue is external and then this one's green if it was actually hooked up to the Arduino, which it's not right now. When you push this button, it would light up green. You saw it flash there for a second. And then when you push it in, it goes to the external. So you can choose whether you want external or Raspberry Pi with Octoprint. So that's the outside. Inside, I set up, I wanted to do cable management really well. So I went ahead and put in some um, cable chain for the X axis, the Z axis, and then also for the y-axis underneath the table, which um, 
controls my heated bed. Um, the micro switch for my X axis is embedded, mounted inside of one of the Z carriages um, so that uh, you don't have it sticking out in the open. I also have clamps. Um, you can see on the back side how that uh, belt goes in to that clamp in the back. It clamps both ends of the belt so you don't have to use zip ties to make, create loops on the ends of the belt and then another zip tie to you know draw the ends of the belt together. I have the x-axis done the exact same way, or the y-axis I mean, sorry. Um, that also allows me to put really a lot of tension on there since I'm not using zip ties to put the tension. So this I have a I have a screw right here that I can go ahead and I tighten up this uh, mount right here and this allows me to go ahead and tighten the belt which gives me a, a fairly tight uh, belt on both axes. So I uh, have this one done the same way. There's a screw on this side right here that allows me to tighten this up. And then these two screws here are to keep the, uh, the two rods from pushing in through the hole <clears throat> that was uh, prevalent in the Prusa I-2 and it would bend the, the Z rods. So that took care of that. And then I have in the very back, I have a, uh, I have a cable cover that you can see um, cover, it covers the cables coming from the power supply across to the electronics. And then that's the micro switch for the Y axis. And then I have a mount for the cable chain for the Y axis as well for the table, the heated bed. That all goes into that cover and then over into the electronics. Keeps it nice and clean, don't have any wires sticking out anywhere. <clears throat> for my auto bed leveling, I have a solenoid that activates the switch. So when that solenoid comes down, it activates or pushes down the switch and then that pin is actually lower than what the nozzle is. So it allows for the, um, the leveling. So let me go ahead and, and do that really quick. So you can see what it looks like. So if I go in and I go ahead and connect and then if I do a G28 for auto home and turn it on. And then if I do a G29 for auto bed leveling. You can see that it doesn't have to move very much. So that uh, makes it a much nicer. I don't have to worry about adjusting anything. Um, everything is nice and tidy inside. Uh, nice outside um, looks. And I get my heated build chamber. And this is the part that I just pulled off of it. So you can see that uh, I'm getting, you know, pretty nice prints off of it. I'm really happy with. Uh, the look of everything. So that's my uh, Prusa i3 iteration um, home built that's been modified for uh, the things that I wanted to do to it. 
So I'll go ahead and post this and um, eventually I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the files doctored up and put those up on um, the internet so that anybody who wants to build this design as well uh, will have the plans to be able to go ahead and do it. So go ahead and uh, like my video if you like it, uh, comment below, I'll try to get any other comments and try to keep up on that and uh, answer anybody that uh, leaves me comments. Until later on.